This water's kind of wet there. You smell like gills of a fish? Yeah, like that's a fish cleaning table. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Clark's Place. Uh, this is our uh, table that we built that we put the K number on and put the motor on in order to drop the car down onto it. So apparently somebody's been cleaning fish on it because <laughs> we sprayed it all really off. It smells and like a fresh cut. I can smell like we just, yeah, filleted or scaled a bunch of bluegill. Yeah, that's too. It must be something from outside. Yeah, got on it. So yeah, we got. We, we welded these on a long time ago that line up with some holes on the came in there, but we don't know member, so we don't know if the uh, QA1 is going to work or not. We're getting the QA1 out. Oh, you get yeah, okay. So we'll see. We got all of our QA1 stuff. We're going to try to start building the K frame and all this suspension. I don't I mean, know if they call it a K member when it's not a factory. Yeah, I don't know if it looks like a K or not. I mean, we're not ready to put the motor on yet, but... We gotta get this out. Yeah, we gotta put those in. Great big roll of the... Uh, it's got, like, foil on one side, sticks, and then it's a thick tar-like material for the sound deadening that goes on his floorboard. That is a very beefy K member. Compared to a factory one. <laughs> yeah, let me not dent your panels here. Okay. There you go. All right. Uh, I think. Who sat here and take the. Okay, yeah. I I wrapping parts. Love it. I doubt that there's going to be any holes that this will line up with. <laughs> then we got to figure out. We may need to change the cart a little. I know. We might. You might have to build something to hold it. You got razor blade? In. Never mind. Yeah. Um, I think this goes to the front. This is the front? Yeah. Okay. All right, take the cloth out of there. All right. Okay. All right. Careful. I guess that won't fall through. Well, no holes for it to bolt to. <laughs> yeah, we may have to figure something out. Or maybe when we get the suspension. No, it's still going to be tail heavy because the calipers yeah. are going to go there. Well, we need we need a couple brackets that fit in here that these. No, we can't have that. That's where it bolts the car. We've got to have that to be able to go up and put the bolts in. Yeah, the car nestles right here. So, we could put something, drill holes, and come up, put a plate across it, and bolt, bolt this down. I think I like that, yeah. Let's do that. All right, that'll be our next project here. We'll, we've got plenty of bolts. We could actually even weld on two bolts and then cut a plate Put a nut on them, kind of like these. Okay. All right. We'll see what we end up doing. Okay. Sounds All right. fine. Okay. We got the old plasma cutter out. It's all dusty, but it still works. Mm. Brought it out of semi-retirement. We got a plate here. We're gonna take weld these. Well, that'll be flat. Cut these off. Weld these, and then we're gonna cut this plate, two plates, and lay across. So we can bolt this to this table because we, we don't want it moving because we got to put a motor on it. So it's yep. got to, yep, it's yep. got to be stout. And we'll put a, a good foam or a cloth across this so we don't scratch any of the powder coating. But yeah, and should work out. What fine. is it with paint sticks nowadays that they're 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 all crooked? This is our guide, so I can just go along here and plasma cut. What is that? That's eight quarter inch steel. Quarter inch steel. Yeah, I think that'll hold it with. I think so. With nuts on both sides or screws okay yeah, so see how the plasma cutter cuts here it should cut it just fine we haven't used it in forever i know watch your feet too i don't know if i've got it here let me let me cut it because i have shoes on okay I have, well, leather, if you... I have leather shoes on here i'll take Oh, 
let me get some glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> when that thing flares up. It's, yeah, it's, it's thick. It's probably too thick for that little uh, Well, we need to turn the air up then. Uh, let's see. Set on cut. I just turned the current up. Oh, did it? Okay. I yeah. Didn't know that thing was oh yeah. Uh, did you find safety glasses? Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's trying to cut, but okay, better. I can smell your uh, stick burning. <laughs> Ooh, about got me. <laughs> okay, let her cool off. We'll probably. Pick that don't, up, don't pick it up and uh, dip it under the water. So now we have two plates. We have to drill two holes after we figure out where these are going to weld exactly. Yep, weld them. Punch we'll holes. cut these off because we'll only need them a couple inches tall. Yep, cool. I like it. So. Oh yeah, that stick was burnt. I can smell wood burning. It's like, oh yeah, watch that's going to fall. Okay. Done. The old little plasma color cutter from, I think that's a Harbor Freight. It's yeah, a Chicago it's Electric Welding. So I'll turn the current back down and turn it off. So, because we got to unplug the power for the welder. For the welder. Okay, cool. okay that's off. Here's these. Yeah, it's nice to have a big extension cord with the same plug. We take it over to the lift. It does the plasma cutter. It does his welder. And it does my welder, my Vulcan. So pretty handy. Just one cord. And then it goes all the way back and it's tied into the circuit breaker box. Yeah, but I, I don't want these threads thing. 
don't. We don't want that. Um, okay, yeah, let's just do that. Oh, this has got metal flakes in it. Yeah, get a clean one over there. Those white ones, that white one's brand new, clean. I don't like the texture on it. <laughs> We're not going to put this on your face. <laughs> Here, wrap it underneath it. Well, then lift it up without banging it. Yeah. Let's just do that. All right. Keep that one down. That's pretty good. I'll lift this one up and wrap it. That's going to do. All right. I think that'll do there. What size would you say that is? Uh, seven sixteenths. Maybe half. I would be the right one. Oh. <laughs> I thought that doesn't look big enough. You don't need to crush the bar. No. Just real snug. It's fine. Now don't use the box in. It won't fit. Hey, you cut that one off. Short. I guess. Oh, no. It's higher here because of this. It bumps it up. It's, this isn't sitting on their level. It's bumped up. See that? Because this keeps it up in the yes, back a little? Yes. Okay, cool. Is that tight enough? Good. Okay. So now we have this. I mean, ready, ready to start putting suspension on it. And then eventually your motor here. And then we drop the car down on this because we can roll this, put it anywhere we want. I like that. We don't have a forklift to be able to do it like that. But. So this is all bolted. We aren't going to hurt the new powder coat of QA1. Yep. And this is what we built this for. This is for a real a factory original K member. K member. And heck, it doesn't even interfere with that. Are we to just cut yeah, it off? Yeah, may, it may with something here that we might have to zip those off. Yeah, you never know. Whatever we got to do, we'll do. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Step one. Done. Step one. Step Go one. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> Step one. Stop recording. You gotta say GoPro stop recording. All right, some cool new tools that will help with cutting and buffing. I already got some uh, 3000 paper over there the other day. This is a 3M. This is like 70, 80 bucks, super soft pad. And then an inter interface Trizact clear coating sanding disc. I think this is like an intermediate pad that they said is tapered on the edge. Let's take a look. See. Oh no, these are sandpaper discs. Okay. Never mind. These are 1500 sanders. Get back in that box. And a bump hat. And then these did not come with my kit. These are little swivels for the Flexzilla high uh, flow stuff. Uh, I noticed when I was painting that the gun always came out. Uh, in one of my last vids, I had the swivel one and I was holding it back to where the paint, uh, the compressor line to the paint gun, it was held back. So I thought that makes for a better paint job or less risk. Bunch of tack cloths because we ran out. And this is some rubber pad. I don't know what this is. That's what happens when you order everything you want late at night on Amazon. 
Oh, maybe these are for the lift. Oh, maybe these are rubber pads for the, yeah, for the, for the lift feet, I believe. Cool. And I got a bump hat for work. And then, this is gonna be cool. This is the offset tool on Amazon. Looks like 9160-3280. This is pretty dang heavy. And it bolts onto your wheel. Then you've got these adjustable feet for the for the height of your wheel. If you can, it can go up to 20 inch wheels on that one. And then you can move that on your axle or on your front suspension to see what size wheel, what size tire will go in. And that will help me make the decision on what size wheels are going on the charger. So we'll see. Okay, didn't really see in the instructions. They're, they're pretty poor instructions unless you go on their videos and watch. Uh, but then everybody, there's a bunch of videos on how to install all these. But first thing to get these engine mounts, put your bushings in. Uh, I put this center rod thing through as well. It appears that all that goes together. And then that goes like such. Comes with the bolt, comes with all these spacers, I guess. You can put spacers on either side. It says put two on each side, that way it's like balanced in the center. But depending on where your motor needs to sit, if it needs to, there's, there's room to adjust like a half inch in there. So that's part one. Okay, I thought I had them right, but I had this one spun around. There's passenger right, pass or driver's left, and if you notice, the shafts are towards the front, and they have to match. So I put like these ears down on this side, but they go up on this side, as I looked in the instructions. These aren't too clear, that's why I'm making this video. But for big block, you can see the ear goes down right here. And then the ear goes up on that side. And it looks like the shaft is towards the front of the suspension. So that's why I've got them mounted that way. You saw these bushings were kind of a pair. A pair. <laughs> a bear. I had to lube them up with some Dawn. And then hammer those in to get them in all the way. Um... It was a little easier. I put both the bushings in on that side, but then I had to hammer in the center shaft that goes through there. So another aesthetic thing that just a simple touch that maybe nobody would ever notice. But when I'm looking in the engine compartment, I don't want to look down and see the threads. So stay there, buddy. So I'll put the main bolt there with the nuts and all that. After I find my stinking washer with the washer and the nut to the back. That way this just looks for a more clean, clean look looking in there. You might not be able to see down in there anyway, but in any event, that's how I believe they're starting to go on. And I've got two spacers on each side. That's a vanilla install. If you've got to cheat it one way or another, depending, uh, maybe my oil pan comes down and I've got a mid oil pan, but I don't know. It says for big block cars, you might need to get a mid mounted pan. So if my pan won't go in there and I can't make it up by moving this back, uh, just a smidge with spacers, 
Um, I may have to get a new oil pan for, for my thing. We'll see. Don't know. But that's the first step here so far. So stay with me. Doing this more. Okay. Upper control arm time. Passenger side right. So this I'm going to put on the right. And we got a passenger side left. Says so we got hardware over there to screw in some hardware to the ends of it. And let me do one in time lapse and then I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so these upper control arm doohickeys, these, the screws go on right threaded. And all of these four thread right. But there are two in this kit that are threaded left. So I'm not sure where these go yet, but I'm sure I'll get into it. So for these, all it takes is leaving two threads exposed and screwing these in with some anti-seize stuff. And maybe you can tell me, I've got this ARP. I think this is basically the same thing, but I use this for all my ARP fasteners, but I think this is anti-seize. And this is just some weird goop. I don't know if this is better or not, you can tell me. Tell me in the comments. Always use that ARP bolt anti-seize stuff. So I'm gonna throw these back together here. Okay, looks like for the instructions, you've got the bolt with the slice through it. You got a washer, you got a spacer, spacer, washer, nut. So I put all of the hardware, all the nuts on the inside. I don't know if that's the way that it'll work out when it goes on the car, but we'll see. And I'm not exactly sure how and what all this mounts to. Exactly. It might go through, yeah, I think I can see it goes up in the little yeah I'll just take one for an example let's see this is the driver's side one so yeah just took me a second to realize where these went so these are gonna go in there like such Da ding yeah cool come out of there Okay, driver's side. Passenger side. I think they said these are universal, so I don't know why they've got them marked when they said either side will work on either side. We'll leave them on where they go. Driver, passenger. And let's see what we gotta do to these. Okay, it looks like this is what we're doing, huh? Bushing. Bushing.
golly, these don't like to go through. Go through, baby. Okay, so this should do a little better. Yeah. All right, that's seated in there pretty good. Uh, they said put a nut on this. They said... I'm going to take these off. Well, those are the left-hand thread buddies. But it showed a nut on here. Maybe I got hardware here. Okay, it looks like you got a washer on both sides and then for street performance, looks like that ball is through there. Uh, just a washer on the nut side and the bolt side. And it looks like the nuts are all on the inside. So we'll throw that on there now. And looks like both sides, everything looked exactly the same. Even the QA1 stickers on both sides. So. To get you coming and going. All right, that's what it looks like. That's got to be tightened. I think it said 50, 50 pounds. And this may have the drag arms because I have all of these special looking tapered spacers and a whole bag of other spacers, which I'm not sure, just like the left threaded uh, guys there. I don't know what those are for yet, and I don't know what all these technical spacers are for, unless this kit comes with drag arms or street performance, but I just put the street performance with the bushings in. I mean, I'm not, I might drag race this car, but I'm not drag racing to drag race it all the time. Well, I might see what it does. But yeah, that looks like it's pretty good there. Okay. Until the next chapter.